Thanks, I just forgot. Okay, welcome everybody to the Sacramento Speaker, now the International Speaker, Author, and uh, uh, Entrepreneur Network. Uh, so starting in 2019, it is now International Speaker, Author, and Entrepreneur Network because we were doing more of these webinars and we're getting people from all over and I thought, well, they don't even know what Sacramento is, I think, in some places. So uh, I'm changing it up. And uh, yes, we still have our monthly luncheons, at least for the first couple months of the year here. And then I'm going to probably do a quarterly lunch, a quarterly mixer, a quarterly multi-speaker thing um, in person. So I want to try to switch it up a little bit just so it doesn't come so stagnant, uh, frankly. But I want to still have places in person that you can speak as well as these webinars. So I am still looking to fill the, the schedule with speakers. And I say this all the time in emails, on webinars, and I still have yet to people to sign up and fill their thing out. Or they sign up on the first page and they don't fulfill the second page. And so there's actually two pages on the website. Right now it's at sacspeaker.com. So sacspeaker, I'll put it in the chat room, to sign up to speak is uh, the place to go. And there are some new URLs, but right now they're taking it to the meetup. Um, but sacspeaker.com will take you to the place where you sign up for the webinar or the in-person speaking gig. And then you just, there's one page where it asks for your basic contact information. And then it should take you to the second page where you have to put your topic description, your bullets, and your bio. And people always stop there. I don't know why. Either they don't have it prepared and they think they're gonna come back to it later, but I can't book you unless you fill out that second page. So just an FYI. Followed by pound. And there's noise. Is that you? Stable. Okay, great. Um, all right. Stable, are you okay getting in? You keep coming in and out. Are you good? Can you hear us, Stable? Participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound. All right. She's trying to get in. All right. So today we have uh, Sable speaking to us in just a few minutes. But as you know... Um, we like to do introductions first. Uh, we like to go around the room and introduce people. Uh, Sable, oh, okay, great. I see you on the phone and video, Sable, so um, it's going to have some feedback there, just so you know. So we're going to have to, if you have both of those on, it's going to give you some feedback. Go ahead and say something. What were you going to say? Sable? Can't hear you. We can't hear. I'm going to leave the computer. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. I, um, my internet was so poor. Okay. The connection was so bad that I couldn't do the video. So I was okay. hoping I could do the uh, phone. Okay. So well, it's clear. We can hear you now. <laughs> so yeah, I, just hang tight. We just won't be able to see your slides or anything, but um, you can. Whatever you want to tell me, I can also type in the chat because we'll save the chat. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to see like if I could mute the sound of the video. But anyway, go ahead. I so don't ahead. know okay. that you're gonna be able to be on the phone and the video at the same time because okay. I'm just gonna no need problem. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So the first thing we do here is introductions. It's a it's like going to a networking event. Um, but it's kind of like speed dating all in one because there's quite a few people coming on tonight and we're going to do like 30 second commercials because we have so many people. So you got to keep it on time if you can, please. You can then also post all your information into the chat room. So we want a longer introduction in the chat. We want your URL. We want your email in there because what I do is I save that chat room. So I save the chat room and put it with the recording of the webinar on the webinar recording page. And if you don't know where that is, you'll get a follow-up email with that. Uh, and then um, you'll be able to listen back to this webinar and you'll also be able to see the chat notes. So if you said, oh, I wanted to connect with Gary and I can't remember his website, then you're gonna be able to do that, okay? Um, so 30 second introductions. I'm gonna start with the people that were already on the line here from the, the coaching call that we had. So Arion and then Chuck and then Tina. Um, if you guys could go first, and then I'll do a, a few more, and then we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Ariane. I'm from Grass Valley. I'm the author of two books, and I also have a chapter and a compilation of a book. 
I do um, ancestral lineage clearing, healing generational family patterns, and teaching people how to change their genetic heritage. I love that. That's super cool. I'm very descriptive. Thank you. Chuck. Chuck Hooper, speaker, speaker, coach. New Year's resolution is to drop everything else and concentrate on just those businesses. <laughs> That's awesome. it. Okay, Tina. I'm Soul in Power. I'm a speaker, a consultant, workshop facilitator, and a retreat host. I'm also a massage therapist, which is where I get a lot of my background for holistic health coaching, uh, 30 years in practice with that. And I'm looking to network and um, group with other people who are interested in creating opportunities to move people through um, their process of being healthier and happier. Awesome, thank you. John, John and then um, Mel, if you're around, I don't think you could get your audio working. Uh, and then Barbara and then Tim. Hey guys, uh, John Clark. I am with the Positive Influence Network and I am a speaker and coach for high school and college students. So I'm working with them, teaching them, um, getting them prepared for success after graduation and teaching them personal development, goal setting and personal finance. Awesome. Barb. Hi, I'm Barb Ingracia of Manage Copyright and I help people understand how they can use copyright as a tool to achieve their goals, to guard their gold mine. People are so ready to grab your stuff and I help you protect it in the creation process. And I facilitate workshops and uh, work with individuals and try to bring some fun to a dull topic. I'm in Central Massachusetts. You always say that your topic is so dull. Stop it, maybe that's why you're not, you know, Nobody wants to talk to you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys need to talk to Barb because you know how many copyright mistakes people make in their copy on their website and, and with images? It's ridiculous. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, so Tim. There you go. There it is. Sorry, now I'm also, so, sorry, I just came back from the gym, by the way. That's why I look like this. Awesome. Uh, way to work out. Yeah, to work out. So uh, my name is Tim Rimel. I'm the author of three books and two mini books. And I have a website that um, my topic is religion, politics, sexuality, and being human. Um, so I have a, I'm the, uh, the uh, host of a podcast called Recovering from Religion and uh, written, you know, I've written a lot for Huffington Post and a bunch of other places. So that's kind of what I do. Awesome. I saw you giggle about that, Chuck. I think you guys need to connect. <laughs> Can't hear you. <laughs> awesome. All right, we got Aaron, Gary, and Lindsay. <laughs> hey, I'm Aaron Sum. I'm in the Sacramento area as well, and I support women entrepreneurs and business owners to get past all that chatter in their head that tells them that they're not good enough, but they're not worthy or deserving of success and help them get past all those blocks that are holding them back and stopping them from getting all their goals. Um, I really love empowering women and watching their transformation as they're able to get past those, those beliefs in, and really step into who they truly are and what they do so they can make a bigger difference and make more money. Awesome. Thank you. Gary. Yes, my name is Gary McKenzie, and I work with, uh, I'm a speaker, a trainer, a coach, and I work with uh, individuals, primarily speakers and aspiring speakers, to help them not only find their topic, but develop their topic and be able to give their presentations with real power and create compelling offers. So then in a nutshell, that's my background. I love working with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are so inspiring. So I like to work with them and help them develop their vision, develop their message, and then have a stage presence so that they can give their presentation in a compelling manner. So thank you. Awesome. Lindsay. Lindsay, Terry, Rhonda. My name is Lindsay Gladhill. I'm here in Sacramento. <clears throat> and I'm a, a coach and a speaker. And my big goal is to work with 
orphans in Brazil to help them change their mindset and become successful entrepreneurs. Awesome. Hi, I'm Terry Rose, Love and Lifestyle Coach, supporting men and women through the ages of 40 to 65, going through the challenging transition of divorce. Great. Rhonda? Hi, I'm Rhonda Liebig. I just came in a little bit late. It's wonderful to see everybody. Have you ever been in an audience where you are watching somebody speak and it just gives you that transformation and that love of, of life? And uh, that's what I do is I bring inspiration and speakers together to help the community feel inspired, um, excited to be starting their day, learning new tools and tactics even in their health. And it's called the Fresh Inspiration Show. And we are on tour in 2019. So come and look for us. And right now I'm looking for sponsors too for the tour. That's what I do. Awesome. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Jill, and then Sable, if you want to just say a couple words and I'll read your actual bio or vice versa when we're when after Jill. Jill, you're muted. You're muted, baby. There you are. Oh, sorry, you guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Jill An here. outfit change. <laughs> <laughs> I took my jacket off. <laughs> hey, I didn't um, do an outfit change for the next call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see some familiar faces Well, thank you for on turning here. on your video, okay, for that outfit change. We appreciate that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see Erin, hi, and Rhonda, hi. Um, yeah, so I publish Wellbeing Resource, and I specialize in working with natural health and wellness practitioners for mind, body, and spirit, um, and primarily in the greater Sacramento region and surrounding kind of counties. And right now, I'm just creating my eighth annual edition, so working with people who would like to be part of that. And then also, I'm creating um, several in-person events um, throughout the year where we can all come together and get to know each other. Yay. Thanks, everybody. Hi, Erin. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Sable, did you want me to introduce you first, and then you can continue on with that and just go right into your presentation? or? on the phone right oh that'll be fine i was muted <laughs> oh okay all right uh give me just one minute and then when i do the introduction you can add to it and then move in and just give me one a couple minutes here so um a couple just i already said a couple reminders in the beginning of the call about signing up for speaking don't be shy you know, um, we take all topics. Typically, you want to make sure you teach something that has to do with entrepreneurs, speakers, or uh, authors. And you've heard that a lot of people have books. Um, I have like eight books myself and uh, doing another one this year. I am a big picture business coach that talks about everything you're doing and how it all flows together, as well as the nitty gritty of the littlest detail of things you need to do, like adding a shopping cart, we were talking about that earlier, or, and which one, and then what's put in it, and how to position yourself, how to price yourself, what business models you need, and then where do you do all the marketing, and what do you need to say, and should you, how do you do your follow-up, and then, you know, where do you get speaking gigs, and uh, what to do in the back of the room at your table display, because it's one thing to know how to speak, but it's another thing to actually look like yourself, look like a speaker, and have a display, right? I mean, so I'm very good with the positioning, as you can tell with the books in the back of me, right? Of everything that you're doing and in order to position yourself in many different areas of your business as the expert in your field. So I hold, uh, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have a mastermind program uh, where most people actually work with me over a course of three years because I have a three-year entrepreneur evolution plan. There's just way too much stuff to do on a regular basis in your business to think you're going to get it done in a year and it never ends, right? So you get new ideas and we have to do a new thing and then we have to go over here to do that thing and then we want to write a book and then we have to do a launch and then there's always more to do as an entrepreneur and I just love to help people make sure that they do it the most affordable way and the most effective 
uh, way to build a consistent revenue generating business. So that's what I do. And, um, and I have lots of opportunities. So if you're not on my email newsletter or watching my Facebook closely or my, at least my Facebook group, um, there's a couple different groups I run. So the Sacramento speaker, which will then be the international speaker, author, entrepreneur network will already has a Facebook group. So you can go there. You can actually promote your speaking gigs. You can look for joint venture partners there. Okay. I encourage you guys to find other people in the group, whether you're on meetup and you're connecting with people on meetup or you're in the Facebook group, or you come to these kinds of calls, I would encourage you to find people to, to partner with either to do a Facebook live together or at least write on each other's blogs and stuff like that, or maybe even do stage swaps. Um, collaboration is really where you're gonna get in front of a lot more people more often and in more ways. And so you wanna look for that, those opportunities. Um, and you can do that through the, there's 2,600 members in the, in the speaker meetup alone, right? And they're, now they're not all on Facebook, so. And of course, we have so much on our plate that how do we get into all these groups and participate with all these things? Well, I've, I've picked about five groups this year for myself that I find the most effective communication with. And I'm going into those groups like on a, maybe not every day, but every other day, and really trying to get to know people, set up um, calls with them, you know, and things like that. I'm really trying to get into those five groups and then block the rest out because you can't be in 20 groups effectively, but you can be in five groups effectively, right? Maybe. And so pick whatever it is you're going to do for this year is my advice and, um, and really nurture those relationships within that little niche or pocket of people that can be a good resource for you. So those are just some quick tips and um, I would, so I am looking for speakers still for this year. Uh, and don't be shy. Um, our luncheons are really great too because they're actually two hours. We have two speakers at every luncheon. Plus I usually do a training and we can even do a mini mastermind too sometimes. So it, it's definitely worth coming out if you're in the Sacramento area to the luncheons on a regular basis. Um, so that one is tomorrow. And if you don't have your RSVP in, please go do that right now while we're talking. That would be really great. <clears throat> All right. So I want to um, introduce, and then after we have hear from Sable, we're going to, um, we can take a few Q&A, and then I want to go around the room again, and if anybody has something they're promoting, like an upcoming workshop, uh, or you're launching a book and you have a certain date, or something like that, and you want to promote it, start putting it in the chat room now, but um, we want you to share because if we can, if we really like what you're doing, maybe we'll go on social media and share it. Maybe we'll put it in a newsletter. If you're a member of the meetup, I will put stuff in the meetup emails too. Like if you just got my email yesterday or today, yesterday, last night, I don't know when it was. Um, I promoted Aaron's event and, uh, and a couple other people's events because I know about them. If I don't know about them, I can't promote them. So there you have it. All right. So today we're talking about, um, well, any questions first about the group in general? For anybody that hasn't been around? Okay. So we do like to bring on a speaker. Granted, they only get about 10, 15 minutes on these kinds of things because it's a quick little thing. But if you can't do a good, you know, deep dive on something and give a really good juicy nugget in 10 or 15 minutes, then you want to work on that because there's a lot of opportunities for you as a speaker to be able to do a 10 or 15 minute talk. You don't just want to say no to those. I can, I've gotten, you know, a $7,500 sale from a 15 minute talk before. So, and that's not the only time. So you just, you want to take advantage of any opportunity possible, drive them to the next step with you. What's the next possible step and do that. So tonight we're talking about why this is the perfect time for your business to go global. And we have our guest speaker, Sable Badaki. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sable Badaki. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is more of a how-to session. She's going to uh, roll up your sleeves and look at under the hood on your business to uh, help you become more ready for global domination in your field. And uh, Sable shares over 20 years of corporate and entrepreneurial experience that spans across the USA and several countries in Africa. She launched her first international organization, 
providing HR services to clients in private and government sector in Nigeria and Ethiopia. She incorporates her life experience, entrepreneurial training, and business building experience into her presentation. She is passionate about supporting female entrepreneurs, build international partnerships that can open global doors to create profitable businesses. She holds, she's the recipient of the 10,000 Women Goldman Sachs Award for Women Entrepreneurs, nominee of the Yale Visiting Executive Exchange Program, SCORE Mentor, and IFC SME trainer. So, welcome to the call tonight, Sable. We're going to you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make sure everybody else is muted. Um, and if you get unmuted, you can mute yourself, and then it, we'll take questions and stuff too. So be ready with questions. Take it away, Sable. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Katrina. Um, I love the format of your group. It seems, it seems uh, pretty exciting. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to be on the um, on the actual uh, the video. I'm in the midst of. Uh, traveling and um, had to kind of camp out in a library which doesn't have great internet. So let me just go ahead and kick off and um, it's kind of, she gave me my, my bio. So our major focus is really kind of taking the scary out of international business. Um, when we talk to people about going international and taking their business outside of the United States, taking it to other countries, um, you know, we, t we tend to get the, the smile of, wow, that sounds exciting. Oh, I'm too, my business is too small for that. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Oh, that sounds great. Call me in about 10 years, then I think I can do that. And um, being international doesn't mean that you have to have 5,000 employees and have, you know, a multi-million dollar business or a billion dollar business. What it means is you just need to have a, a structure to your business that has been proven and then you can now take that structure somewhere else. And one of the examples I always like to use is um, Mercedes-Benz. customer is not in Germany. Um, at one point, they were selling more Mercedes-Benz in Nigeria than they were selling in any other country. And so you don't have to always be necessarily a local champion before you can be a global champion. Actually, really grow your market outside of your country. I want you to think about the fact that two-thirds of the consumers actually live outside of the United States. So that means two-thirds of the consumer power is not even in the U.S., and yet we're spending a lot of our time focusing on um, selling to other Americans. Another thing is that if you have a product or a service um, going international, being from the United States, the brand of the USA is so strong that people um, automatically are super interested in what you have. And it already comes with some sense of um, class or a, an idea that there's going to be quality or it's going to be great. The other thing is why you want to go international is that it's a great opportunity to be the first mover advantage. And I don't know about you, but I know so many times when we get into networking events or we go into somewhere but most of the time, you're not the only person in the room that does what you're doing. You may, other people may not do it exactly what you're doing, but they probably do something very similar. This is a great time to take your business somewhere to a country where no one else is probably doing what you're doing, where you could actually be the first. And you're really filling a need or filling a gap in a market. So another big question I always get was, I don't have a product. Can I still go international? And so most of the years, and even until now, what I actually um, export is my intellectual property. I don't have a product. Um, it's services that I provide. I've provided human resource uh, consulting services. I've provided business services. And um, in about three days, I'm about to uh, go and turn around the school with another country. So each time, it's always my intellectual property that I'm exporting into other countries. So it does not have to be a product. And um, before I finish with you, I'm going to let you know there's an opportunity. If you have a service, if you are a speaker, an author, a coach, there is an opportunity um, that we have now where you could actually start going international if that's something that you're super interested in. The other question I always tend to get is where? Where do I go? How do I know what country I should go in? What countries are, are more open for international business? 
And here it takes a little, being a little more savvy and really understanding more of who is your current ideal client. And so where is your current ideal client growing? And so if you think about who are you serving now, and this is, you know, of course, beyond demographics. So this is looking at your demographics and your psychographics of what kind of people you're serving. I've heard so many uh, in the introductions from entrepreneurs, from women entrepreneurs, from women who are, you know, getting trying to get women out of their way. So there, uh, there were so many different uh, businesses here. Now, if you look at who you're serving here, you ask yourself, where is there a rapid growth or even a growth? of that ideal client in another country who has now a newfound economic power or who has always had economic power but just didn't have an opportunity to use it on a particular product or service that I have because they've never had access to it. So I would give you an example of one of my clients who has um, a styling business. She's a fashion stylist. And what we found in um, South Africa was there was a lot of women not only going back to work, so a lot of women, you know, really going into corporate. So that meant that these women now were very more, more interested than ever before how their clothes looked. So that really made a market for her. What we also find out also was that a lot of women were interested in doing entrepreneurial work. And so with that, it also meant that um, she had an opportunity to start training other women in her certification program. So that's just an example how um, you can just look at a market and see how you can export your product or export your service just by identifying who's there. We have another client, you know, when we think about, um, you know, what could you export? Sometimes it's not even just what you're using. You can, it could be used in a country in a different way. We have a client who has a dental floss. And so dental floss, you know, seems pretty basic here and pretty mundane um, here in the United States. Um, you, you know, Johnson & Johnson pretty much owns that market. But when we exported his um, dental floss, we didn't send it out necessarily as a dental floss. We sent it out as a corporate gift. Because we knew in the African countries where we were taking it, they love to give out different things at parties, something that's so unique. And so this made a, a perfect party favor where we could brand it with the uh, bridal, you know, the couple's name if it was for a wedding, if it was for a funeral, we could have branded it. And so, this, so here we were taking someone's ordinary product that we used as a basic hygienic tool, but it became a gift product when we took it to um, um, an African country. And then we have another client who had, um, sometimes you don't even have to use your own product. You can also be licensed or a distributor for someone else. We had a client who had um, distribution rights for a uh, antibiotic spray, which she took over to um, another country as well, another African country. We pretty much do a lot of work in Africa, where she was able to take that to that country. So just wanted to give you an example of different ways. And a lot of times um, what we think about is that, oh, I have this product in house um, and I have to only export a product or I have to export this product the exact same way that we're using it here in the United States. And that is not necessarily so. So you want to just kind of understand the culture a little bit of where you're going into of a country to so this way you can see how maybe your product could fit. Uh, another thing is we also had a, a client who had ready prepared foods that were microwavable, which was a big hit in China because they were looking to use their microwaves more. They were underutilizing it. And so who would think that someone is really looking for opportunities to use their microwave? And so that's what kind of gave them an opportunity. So these are just different ways and um, if you're thinking about going international, this is definitely a time when people are looking at the news. They're worrying about all the trade wars between China and Mexico. Um, but what we see now also is United States looking at other countries that we've never looked at before that can go international. Um, we pretty much had a focus on, on doing business with China and Mexico and some of Europe. And now we are now really looking at what other countries that we have been not doing business with and looking for opportunities to do business. The United States government, our SBA administrator, is very um, interested 
in U.S. businesses doing international business. Only 3% of all small business owners actually do international business. So that's very small. Only 3% um, of the millions of businesses that we have. So it's just such a great opportunity. So I want to give you an, just a, a little more information about if you are a speaker, you are a coach, you are a consultant, you have a passionate message that you really want to share. We are going to India in April of this year. And if this is something that you would be interested in, getting on a global stage, sharing your message with over a thousand women, over 200 nations, because you know you have something that's going to make a difference, then we just invite you to join us as well. Um, I think my information may be there. If it's not, it's um, it, it's I'm at guru at sheworksnow.com, and it's G U R U at she works now.com and it's a great way for you to start really um, going international and so that's just one of the many opportunities we do trade missions and that's a great way so if you're interested in going international and you're kind of like mm, I'm not really sure look at trade missions it's a great way for you to first get your feet out there trade expos is another great way for you to get your yourself out there as well by putting yourself in front of your international audience. So I'll take questions now um, based on um, what I said or just what you're interested in doing international business. Yeah, so is your expertise then from the HR and the business operations part of it all? Is that where you're coming from? Um, so when I did HR, it was strategy. Um, we um, um, consulted for the large bank in Ethiopia and crafting their um, human resource strategy. Okay, you mean for people who have employees, right? Did the bank have employees? No, for people who have employees, because there's not a lot of us on here that have employees. We're all entrepreneurs or speakers or virtual, you know, people. So, are you talking about people I'm sorry. Have, Did, um, ask me your question again. Are you talking about having people that would need a place of business and or employees in the other country then? Say one more time, your question. Uh, your expertise as far as going global, is it for setting up a business that needs more of a, um, a, a brick and mortar location with employees? Oh, okay. All right. So, the, so it varies. So it just kind of varies um, in what you have. So um, if it's a service, you don't have. Can you help somebody that's more virtual or wants to go and speak there perhaps and or sell books out of the country um, or mm -hmm. bring books okay. or that kind of thing? Maybe that might help some of the people on the call is how to really right. so, their books and their speaking in different countries perhaps. So in terms of virtual, you really don't need a lot of support with that. It's just a matter of, um, you know, targeting your Facebook ads or your Instagram ads to go international. If you have some speak, if you're interested in doing international speaking or taking to the country, then um, our trip in Delhi would be perfect for you because that's where we're taking our speakers because we do have like a quite a few service based. Um, people within our group, so we're going to New Delhi, and we'll be participating in a forum there of delegation. So that would be perfect for a speaker. We also have, uh, when you have trade missions, um, that is an opportunity. If someone has books, it's a like it's you know, it's there is a buyer, a buyer who would buy their books for their store. Okay. Katrina, can you have her go over her contact info again, please? I didn't get that clearly. Or someone right. put it in the chat. Sable, what's your um, your website uh, again? Okay, so it's best to just by my email. It's guru g u r u at she works now dot com. Guru at she works now dot com. Is that your website, or mm -hmm. is that just an email? Yeah, that's the email that's best to reach me on. But sheworksnow.com is not your website? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. 
It's not. That's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, I would just, so I know some people, has anybody done uh, like a version of your book in a foreign language or anything or something like that? That would be of interest probably. Anybody interested in doing that? No, Chuck, you have so many books, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Lindsay. And even sometimes, I mean, you have to also think about um, even if you are going to another country, you don't necessarily have to convert. So um, it depends on what country you're going to and who you're talking about. So, I mean, there's a lot of co countries that do speak English. Um, even if you're going to Europe, I mean, if you're going to somewhere like England, it's not the same English as American English, but um, you don't always have to translate your book. And sometimes you can get a publisher in another country who will actually handle the translations for you. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, when I think going global, I just think of adding more subscribers to my list from all different countries, right? And uh, then there's yeah. some yeah. compliance issues too that you have to look out for, like the big GDPR thing that we had last year and how to mm -hmm. comply with that. And I know there was a ton of information going around. I don't know if you have any insight on that kind of stuff. No, because we, we really don't do a lot with online. In terms of international, we really focus a lot more on actually taking the person physically um, to another country to do business there. I see, I see. Well, it looks like Ariane posted in the chat, she said she looked at the cost of translating her 240-page book into Spanish and it was $5,000. I wonder, I wonder what Janice charges, Chuck, does she do that? Spanish Janice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know if she does that or not, but I'm meeting with her tomorrow morning before the lunch. I'll find out. Yeah, that might be interesting. Yeah, to find out. I know um, a couple people have their books in foreign. There's got to be somebody like on Fiverr or Upwork or someone like that that would do that for a lot less of a team. But there's and one of the things about doing international business is not always that you're selling to them. So one of the things you're thinking about doing a book or publishing, India has a huge um, publishing market. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our um, clients in Nigeria do, do a lot of their publishing, um, sorry, a lot of their printing, excuse me, a lot of their printing in India as well in Dubai. And so those are an, uh, other opportunities where you can take advantage of you know, having prices at a lower rate, and so you can also be competitive in selling. So you can have a bigger margin on selling your book. Awesome. Anything else you guys have for Sable? Any other questions? Katrina, am I coming in? Am I coming in? Okay, I see I have a big delay tonight. No, you have. You're right. Oh, good. Okay. Um, you know, Maria from Sweden, she oh, yeah. had her book translated, and there's like some things that she really had to think about, about like in translation for culture, making sure that the book is translated and all that. I don't think she paid that much for her translation. So I might be able to um, give you another resource of how to translate your book and, um, and finding somebody that's not $5,000, but um, I thought she paid like a thousand or something. Yeah, it would seem like that 5000 would be high. Okay. Well, let's uh, turn the tables a little bit. Thank you so much, Sable, for being here and sharing your awesome expertise. I put your email in the chat room so people had it. And uh, reach out to her. Maybe you guys can connect. If you've RSVP'd on the Meetup group itself, you know, you can go and message people from there, right? So you can go in and message people on the, on the Meetup. Um, so I want to do a five minutes in the spotlight, and then I'm going to go around the room and, and share anybody's live events and things you've got or speaking gigs you want to invite people to. I know there's a lot coming on February, uh, January and February. So um, I'm by the, I know the, those of you that are on, uh, not on video, you might want to go on video if you want a spotlight because I want to see someone's hands as fast as possible. So if you're interested in the five minutes in the spotlight where you kind of share a challenge that you're working on and then we all just kind of pour into you ideas and, and resources, then I need you to be on video so you, I can see you raising your hands. Because I'm going to count down from three, two, one, and then I'm going to want to see your hands. Okay, so three, two, one, raise your hand.
No, but he did it. <laughs> Why is this always the case? That's so funny. Not always. Okay, Tina. Yay. Thanks for showing up, girl, and, and uh, being vulnerable and sharing. What can we help you with today? So you have like five minutes. Just share like for 30 seconds what your challenge is. And then... Okay. I've, I raised my hand because I just want to capitalize on the experience. Yeah. Honestly, I am, as I put in the, in the comments, I started this process six years ago and then it all got put on hold because life got crazy and I needed to be mommy for, yeah. um, for my kids. And now yeah. I'm back. Uh, no holes bar. I have complete support from my amazing husband. I have time and energy and the ability to do this. And so I'm chipping away at it. Um, I finally hired some, some help with my website and uh, I, I'm learning the social media as that has changed too. So for me, it's just a lot of overwhelm. I have a lot of content. I have a lot of life experience and I, I do have experience in the past speaking, but it's, it's like I'm trying to channel um, all of these different parts of, of my interests and, my, and what I have to share and it becomes very overwhelming. So. Imagine that. She's an entrepreneur that's overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, we don't know anything about this, those of us who've been around a little bit longer. I don't. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's the, the longer you get into it, the more you say no to things, right? Number one. So you've got to set your boundaries, set your schedule. Uh, you've got to... Um, really focus on if you need to make money then you should focus on revenue generating activities if you don't have to if you're not stressed about money and you want to provide books or get speaking gigs then you got to just focus on those things right if you're trying to do all of the above then you better be good at managing your time <laughs> and or hiring assistants to do little things here and there that may take you too long that someone else can do a lot uh, quicker and for so hiring a team is is so important. Who else wants to share anything? Any advice or thoughts for Tina on how to get over out of overwhelm? <laughs> Have a good morning routine for sure. I was gonna right? I was gonna add that I feel like when I really stepped into um, stopping and telling my clients just to do routine that I finally started jumping into it. And so what I found, Tina, is that um, the more that I can keep my mind centered, I feel like I have like these downloads that just, because since you have so much experience, that's why I'm saying this, yeah. is that you already know so much. So you're at the level where if you're doing your meditation and you're connecting, and if you're doing that, I'd go even deeper. And then, so then you can have that quiet space. So you really hum and you know what direction to go and what what to do i believe you have it all in you and i have so much support from katrina talking over and over again about having support around you and sometimes financially it feels kind of weird to ask people that you know i want to hire you to do stuff but when you start doing that and you start doing your morning routine maybe an afternoon it massive stuff's gonna happen for you real quick because you have so much knowledge in where you are right now, what you what you're doing. I, I'm beginning to experience that. Um, you know, I do. I have really lined up my time management this year. A lot of it was uh, last year was just kind of creating the foundation, and now it's like, okay, I'm hitting the ground and I I get to go. Um, I do meditate, and uh, and unfortunately, I've been waking up at like two thirty in the morning praying that when I look at my clock, it'll be, it'll say six because I just, I'm so inspired and, and I'm often up by 4.30 because Tina, you know, the 2 a.m. is a good time to meditate. So when you're ready at four, cause I give it 4.30, I spend an hour, hour and a half on my, on my soul space so I can take care of my clients. Two o'clock, that's your meditation time right now. Just get up and do it. Guy, well, I used to be able to be up at two o'clock and now if I get up at two and I don't get a good solid nap and even if I do, I'm, a, I'm looking at the clock at five ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot I, different at this age. <laughs> that happened with me all the time. Like for, I mean, I would get up at two thirty or three thirty almost consistently. And I've changed some of the things in my, um, I, well, I've had some different medications and not like medications, but my doctors, because my brain just, as soon as I, even remotely wake up to even to go to the bathroom, 
it clicks on to my to-do list. And, and then I get an idea for an email. And then I get an idea for a client. And then I get, and I have to like get my cell phone out and either like text myself reminders really quick because I don't want it to go away. So, and then I'm awake. And so I hear you, you know, and I have a new, I had to get some a sleep aid, honestly, because my- I actually my started taking um, CBD. CBD oil is awesome. Uh, it wasn't enough for me because um, my brain. Yeah, I want if you if you would love to, I would love to connect with you because I have the same thing what Katrina is saying and what you're saying, but um, but I've been asking a lot of help from other people that are in the wellness industry as I am also. I would love to have a conversation with you because I think as entrepreneurs. We are meditation and stuff, but I bet you there's an angle. I'd love to listen and just, we could, we could play with this probably within an hour. You'll, you have some new strategies and I'll just, I'd love to do that as a favor for you. Cause I think as, as entrepreneurs, we're really working as a team and I'm, I, I deeply feel what you're feeling and I, and I bet you have it in you, what your next steps are. And I'd love to be there to listen and help you. Uh, certainly will take you up on that. Yeah. There. I'm happy to have made this, this connection. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a tough thing, especially in your forties and fifties. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, thanks for um, thanks for offering up uh, that challenge because I think more of us have it than not. So yep. I would let I know a bunch of people had to uh, drop off, but if any of you have, um, you can either say if you have a, a quick little question or if you have an upcoming speaking gig. Or maybe you do Facebook Lives every Tuesday and want to tell us about them. Or maybe you have a Facebook or, or LinkedIn group that you want to invite us to to, to interact in. Um, or you have a live event or a, some other virtual event. This is the place to share that now. So um, we can popcorn it in case you're not all prepared. And then make sure you put that stuff in the chat too. Does anybody want to start? Raise your hand or unmute. Okay, Barb, and then Gary, and then Tina. Well, Sable's uh, information was so useful, so valuable. And she talked about her product being her intellectual property. And I have a chapter in Katrina's new compilation book, her book entitled Jumpstart Your Blank. And I have a chapter in there called Jumpstart Your Intellectual Property. And that helps explain a little more about what is intellectual property and that it is your gold mine. Um, also, um, on January 1st, lots of content from published in 1923 came into the public domain in the United States. There had been nothing new into the public domain in the US in 20 years. So this was a big deal and in the Google age, the, the opportunities for, for reusing, repackaging all this content, um, the opportunities are, are huge. So I did five uh, little videos in, uh, for YouTube called Countdown to Public Domain Day. And uh, I put in the chat how you would find those. Um, and I had some fun doing them. I did a New Year's Eve party and I, so anyway, mm -hmm. if you'd like to know more about the, those resources, the public domain, um, you can find them on YouTube. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Barb. Uh, Gary. Hey, thank you. I've got uh, three events coming up. The first one is this Thursday, the 10th. The Public Speakers Association is holding a virtual summit. Hmm. Starts from... Uh, I think it's 8 a.m. and it goes till probably 3 or 4 in the afternoon. No charge to it. You can just sign up at the Public Speakers Association. I will be speaking at 10 a.m. on the program. The next event that's coming up is the 12th. The 12th, the National Speakers Association is holding a program in Lafayette, California. It's from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. The cost, I believe, is $65. Our speakers, uh, the president of the National Speakers Association, will be there uh, presenting. So excellent, excellent uh, opportunity to come and network. And then finally, 
on the 29th, Tuesday the 29th, I'm speaking at the uh, Wisdom, Women's Business Center in Roseville, California. And my topic is how to market your business on a shoestring budget. And that's from uh, 9.30 to 12.30. And there's, it's a free event. There's no charge to attend. So again, that's the uh, Women's Business Center in Plasterville, California. So those are my three upcoming events. Awesome. Great. Are you going to put the links in the chat? So I will do that. Up? Okay. Um, who else? Erin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm having my annual visioning workshop on Friday this week. And this, this event's a full day where we go through your limiting beliefs about what you can have, create, um, you know, in your life and business. And then we break through those beliefs, get rid of them, create more empowering beliefs and really get you into the feeling that you can have all the things that you want and really believing that and that you deserve everything that you want to create. And then we jump into your dreams for the year and beyond and we make vision boards. So it's really, really fun. It's a really inspiring transformational day. I have a couple spots left. So if you're interested, I'll put the link down below as well. And uh, I'll give you guys a code too to come for for a little bit of discount. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be there. It's going to be fun. So many yeah. people are doing vision board workshops, and it's more than just that for hers. Uh, they're not all created equal. So Yeah, a lot of them are just a couple hours, and this is a full day. Awesome. Yeah. Rhonda, you got something going on probably, right? I do. Um, the Like I said, the Fresh Inspiration Show, we're going to be in – San Francisco, Roseville in March, and um, all throughout Sonoma County and Marin. And it's a great place to do networking. Most of the people that are coming to our shows are entrepreneurs. So um, I put a link down there for the freshinspirationshow.com. You can look to see if you're a speaker and an author, if you want to speak. For me, 2019, we're actually full for our speakers. But like I said, I'm looking for sponsors, but I'd love for you to be in the community. More entrepreneurs, more more ways to um, to cross market and do joint ventures. You're already booked for speakers for the whole year. Yeah, I, sp I focused in on November and um, January, November and December to do that. So then I can fill the room and, and cross market with my group. So now it feels like a community. So I'm creating something new that I'm, I'm yeah. kind of understanding, but yeah, we're pretty much a team for a year now. And um, so yeah. inviting people in to be able to really appreciate uh, these authors and speakers that are professional, been doing it for a while. And I bring four speakers with me. I'm the host. I dance mm -hmm. and I play. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> Love it. All about having fun. Right? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do any more in Sacramento or... I am. I have um, I'm having a VIP fun um, thing in December, um, December 5th, and it's going to be over here at the Fresh Inspiration. <coughs> December? Which is my ranch. Yeah, I'll be in Roseville, though. I'll be in Roseville three times this year. Okay. We're going to be February. We, we're going to be in a few times, yeah. And the tickets are only $20. But, I mean, but basically people really do um, do some great networking. I've seen people make some joint ventures and because I hold that space, I, I, I'm talking like this is the place to be meeting the new people you're going to be do, doing business with and really talking yeah. to each other as community, not throwing yeah, it apart. I, like, I like how you're building the community so all of the speakers are helping each other through the year. Yeah. That's it's good. interesting. I, 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 I could learn so much from you, Katrina. I've been with you um, for years now. And so I feel that some of my superpower strength is – just watching what you're doing. And, um, and so just like I said, for Tina too, I, it feels like a download. And I think cause I'm getting inspired by others and it's just kind of culminating. And so it's been a big, wonderful journey as we're building this. Building community is so important. And I'm actually, I look at you and <clears throat> Jake and a couple other people that are doing so good at building community. And, um, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. I, I'm, I'm still learning on doing a lot more myself because it's so it's, important. It's, it's interesting, but you, know, you just love on people, and I, I just feel like people like what you do, and I just feel like people say, man, I want to play. I want to dance. <laughs> Anybody else? 
if you don't know about the speaker author coaches um, conference in LA at the end of this month, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be probably a hundred people. There's, uh, I don't know, like nine or 10 speakers. I'm, I'm speaking there and Jake Valentine, who's another friend of ours and in the group. And um, it's the first annual and he's just building this really good network on Facebook right now. So if you're not a part of the speaker author coaches network, um, network on Meetup. I'm sorry, Facebook. Ugh, too many things. Uh, <laughs> uh, you definitely want to join the Facebook group. I swear he adds hundreds of people every week, and he's got this magic for doing. I think four thousand people I in there right now. He's got forty four hundred. Like oh, four years ago, he was at four thousand. He gets so many people in his group. I'm like, what is? And all he does is really just love on his group and doesn't promote really at I all. Because he plays his guitar. You know, music just, gets, gets uh, people. He plays his guitar. I, it's so <laughs> frustrating. It's like, okay, so stop promoting is your, is your saying. Don't promote anything and people will just come and buy. Like, really, I don't believe that. <laughs> 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 anyways so that's gonna be fun it's in LA and I put the link in the thing um, I have a speaker training it's a get started speaking so if you need to work out your speaker sheet what you're talking about how you're gonna do your setup in the room how you're gonna really monetize do your offers your EZS offers it's a one day February 22nd in Roseville and the links in the chat um, there's a bunch of other free stuff in there I put the Facebook group in there I put the meetup link in there, um, and I will be doing another um, coaching, a free coaching call. I'm figuring January jumpstart month, so I'm going to do one on the 29th at 1 o'clock Pacific, so you can sign up for that. We don't even have to sign up. Just remember the Zoom link and put it on your calendar and show up. Um, there's a gazillion other things I'm doing, so you're just going to have to watch the emails. Anybody else? <laughs> Jill no okay all right well thanks for being here you guys and some of you for two hours and it's been a good uh, good call we'll see some of you at lunch tomorrow and we'll do more because we have two we have River speaking and then I'm doing a training on follow-up uh, and so it's uh, it's gonna be a good meeting and um, we're small but mighty at those luncheons but we can do some masterminding and That'll be fun. Yay. All right. We'll see you Have next time. Remember, it's the first Tuesday for the webinar, typically at 5 o'clock. And the first Wednesday, it's just this month. I knew people would be sleeping that first week. So, they <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.